This example is similar to the previous one. Again, we have experimental data, and we want to gain some information from plotting the experimental data. So in this case, we have a toy car, and we did some experiment and determined the displacement of the toy car as a function of time at four different power settings. And to save time, I only included data from one trial. Therefore, we're not going to also plot error bars. Um, so in this case, we want to use the data to determine the average speed at the different power settings. So what, how do we do that? As you can tell, we actually have four sets of data. Um, each of them contains one uh, independent variable, in this case the time, and a dependent variable, in this case the displacement. Therefore, if we just highlight this region and then insert our scatter data again, as you can tell, that's the experimental data that corresponds to our uh, power setting at 25%. Uh, but the question is, how, how can we plot multiple sets of data in the same chart? So to do that, we're going to uh, there are probably other ways to do that as well, but I'm going to right click the area of the chart and then select data. So this is the first series that we plotted. And at this point, probably we want to change its name to 25% um, power setting. And then as you can see, we can start adding data set. Add, and then we're going to move on to plot 50% power and the x value again is the same time, but the y value now is this column right here. And then continue on the next power setting. Again, x axis is time, y axis the displacement in this column. And then last one, 100% power. The x value again, the same time and then the y value right here. Okay. And that completes the chart. Let me include the axis titles as well as the chart titles. I'm back. And as you can see, I have included all the data in this chart, but you might ask, how can I tell uh, what color corresponds to what series? So for that, we need to include legends and it is really simple to do that. Basically, we just click on this chart and then add legend. So because I have already named my four different series of uh, data, therefore, um, the name of the series is automatically shown here as the legend. So you can clearly tell uh, how the different colored data correspond to different data set. Um, so the next thing to do is to determine the average speed. And again, we are going to fit our experimental data to a theoretical model, which as you know, is that the displacement equals to um, the speed. Sometimes we use V for velocity times T. Therefore, uh, as you can tell, we see four linear relations here, um, which means that the slope uh, of this linear equation is going to be the average speed that we're looking for. So again, we're going to fit everything against trend line. So again, when we add trend line, we want linear equation. Um, to save space, I'm not going to include the R squared value uh, because I can tell the linear relationship is pretty obvious. I do want to display equation and because I understand physics, I know that at time zero, there really shouldn't be any displacement. Therefore, the intercept should be kept at zero. So let me continue to do that for the rest of the data. I can also make the font of my equation bigger by right click and then font, change this to size 12 is good. So now I have my four equations of the trend lines the trend lines are, again, these theoretical straight lines right here that we see that fit nicely through our experimental data. So from our trend lines, I can answer the question. The slope here should be simply our average speed. So let me just keep one decimal place.
And by the way, you can change that as well. You can format the text, make them data, and then keep only one decimal place. So as you can see now, this data shown here only has one decimal place. I'm not going to do that for the rest of it. So um, as you can see, we answered our question again using um, uh, our graph. Now I'm going to use this same example to demonstrate how to plot a 3D surface plot. So let me copy these data over. The easiest way to, to plot a surface plot is um, actually we need to clean this up to only include the information we want in this surface plot. Okay, So after I clean that up, I highlight everything and then insert over here. And there are different options. I'm going to just pick this one right here. And then you can also add access titles. For example, here I can say this is time in the unit of second again. I'm not going to finish everything. So as good as it looks, I want to caution you about something. These right here, they are not true numbers. They are not values. Um, they actually are simply labels. They represent the different categories. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back to our previous chart, and if you start to um, change these numbers to, uh, to from, for example, 13, 25, uh, and you can see that our graph gets, gets mixed up uh, instantaneously uh, because these are actual x-axis. Uh, if you change this value right here, let me go back. If you change this value right here, that actually would not make a difference because remember, these are just nodes. Uh, we manually put in the names for our different series. But if you change this one, that sure would cause trouble. However, coming back to our surface chart, if we change this number right here, you can see that our chart is not altered. The only difference is now this label here shows 25 instead of 5. So as you can see, this is more similar to the bar chart than our scattered chart that we used earlier to represent our experimental data. Um, Excel would plot the data out in an evenly spaced out fashion. Um, and Excel only uses these numbers as labels along this direction and along the, this direction. And of course, if you change these values, then the plot will surely change accordingly. So this probably doesn't help much with the purpose of this example, but surely this is a very nice 3D representation. As you can see, the different data regions are color coded. Um, and also you can rotate this graph. So if we go over he here and see there's a 3D rotation, we can rotate a along the x-axis, we can rotate along the y-axis, and you can see this, the data from different angle, and we can change the perspective as well. So all sorts of cool representation that you can do using the surface chart.